So I mentioned that I was thinking of doing a commentary of my E11S run that I uploaded a couple of days ago, and a lot of people in the comments expressed interest in hearing my thought process during the run, um, what parts of my run are scripted, and what parts aren't. So here it is, this is my first commentary. I hope you guys uh, can find something useful here to take away and maybe apply it to your own gameplay. Before we start, I'll say first and foremost that this run is using the Crit Relic BIS with 1929 spell speed. A lot of what I'm doing can still be applicable for the high spell speed set, and some takeaways can still be made. However, do keep in mind uh, while you're watching uh, that your GCD tier might be different, and certain lines that I take may not be possible at high spell speed unless you use multiple GCDs in your ice phase as mana tick fillers. The first thing you'll probably notice here is my starting position. I'm starting east, away from the team, and this is for right after the first elemental break mechanic so that I'm perpendicular to my team and less likely to bait, bait the bird strike. I'm also using an opener that requires a mana tick tracker. I'm using the mana tick tracker from an ACT plugin called Hojo Ring. It's not the same one as the one that you'll find in the balance. Um, so it does not have an automatic built-in countdown starter. Um, so I do have to manually start the countdown based on where my mana bar is. But because I am starting the countdown at a very specific point, my phase one of E11S is pretty much scripted. And the only real variation is whether or not I get thunder procs. The opener I'm about to do doesn't really have an official name, but I think people tend to call it the JP transpose opener or some variation of that. It does require a pre-pull minus five second po potion, which you should be doing in Fate Breaker anyways if you're killing the boss uh, very quickly. Um, around 925 kill time or so is when you want to start uh, using your potions at about minus five seconds. Um, and that makes sure that you get full usage out of your three tinctures in the phase. So yeah, this opener is essentially the mod JP opener, except your triple cast and swift cast are shifted to be used on a fire four, two despairs, and an instant cast fire three, instead of three fire fours and one despair. The instant cast despair I cast at the end here is used to weave the transpose and I use sharp cast on the T3P I get from the starting thunder cast uh, to just get enough mana to do a 3F4 despair line. After the elemental break mechanic you'll notice that my team converges south while I stay east. One interesting thing about E11S is that you can actually extend the duration of the first phase and second phase by having the boss turn a full 180 degrees for burn strike mechanics. It may not sound like much, but it can let your melees get an extra GCD in before the phase ends. And from what I hear from the melee DPS in my group and the tanks, it makes dodging the lightning burn strikes a lot more comfy. So to accomplish this, my team, seven of them, converge south uh, while I stay east. There's only a one in eight chance that the boss targets me so it's fairly consistent that the full 180 degree turn will be achieved. So I see that the first burn strike is lightning and the boss is not targeting me. So I finish my 3F4 despair line and I save my thunder proc for my ice phase. This overwrites, uh, this, oh, this avoids me overriding my thunder too early. And it also serves as a filler GCD for my ice phase to get mana. Now if the first burn strike was fire and it, the boss wasn't facing me, I would do, use despair and then my thunder proc right away and use that to weave sure cast. And you can see an example of that in the 909 speed kill that I posted earlier this week. Um, if the burn strike was facing me, uh, whether it's thunder or fire or thunder or fire, I would use the thunder proc to move to the side. Um, and if it was fire, I would use uh, sure cast during that weave window. Um, and that is enough time to dodge uh, the lightning extended strike as well. As I'm going to the middle with my thunder proc, I weave sprint 
and this is fairly important and I stand under the boss here and this is so that if I get a thunder uh, tether I'm able to slide cast to the north of the uh, to the relative north of the arena here uh, if you notice we have our boss facing uh, west in this scenario so since I'm under the boss uh, and I have sprint on if I am targeted with the lightning tether I have enough time to slide cast uh, from the middle to the relative north uh, of the boss uh, since I have sprint on. This fire phase here is scripted to be a 3 fire 4 line so it's a short fire phase and this is because it lines up my next fire phase nicely with the trick attack that comes out at 1 minutes and 10 seconds. It also lets me addle the burnished glory cast that's about to happen right now and since I get a thunder proc I'm actually also able to weave a mana ward to help uh, with the damage mitigation um, just to uh, lessen the damage on myself. Normally the addle um, would barely catch the cast but since I got the thunder proc I'm able to addle early. If I didn't get the thunder proc there I would have to addle uh, with uh, this fast fire 3 cast and it's actually a lot easier to hit this addle on the burnished glory when the boss turns 180 degrees for the burn strike and it delays this mechanic uh, a little bit. Now you might be wondering isn't doing a 3 fire 4 line here um, a potency loss and yes it is a small uh, loss um, but it's more so used here for alignment um, and so I would rather take the um, alignment that you know keeps me in line with what I'm trying to do than um, you know, try and use a 4 or 5 or 4 rotation where I'm not trying to do that and it will uh, kind of mess with uh, my alignment for that phase. Um, in my next ice phase I'm doing a, um, a blizzard 3 and I weave uh, sharp cast and just use my thunder. One important thing to know about thunder when you're playing the crit set uh, at 1929 or at um, 2030 spell speed and you're doing the AI rotation so you're doing a lot of uh, skipping Blizzard 4 um, especially and one, one important thing to know about Thunder is that when you sharp a Thunder or a sh sharp a Thunder proc and then you start doing a 4 or 4 despair line you are actually not able to keep the Thunder proc for your ice phase upcoming unless you get a lucky refresh of your Thunder you need closer to 2400 spell speed to keep that proc for ice phase and none of the current crit BIS sets run close to that spell speed. But if you are playing a higher spell speed set, uh, maybe you have a mix of gear uh, because you're not fully bis, or maybe you are just playing the high spell speed set, uh, then this doesn't really apply to you and you're able to keep that thunder proc for your ice phase, uh, which is very helpful to use as a filler to get mana back. So I finished my fire phase here and I use this thunder proc that's about to expire to weave transpose and triple cast. I'm able to get uh, one fire four and this despair in the trick attack that just came up as well as the thunder proc and I use two Xeno glossies here and weave uh, swift cast and lucid dreaming um, as manatic fillers. So one important thing to notice to know about uh, transpose lines is that when you're in Umbral Ice 1, you get uh, 3,200 mana per mana tick. So if you want to do a 3 Fire 4 Despair line after using a Fire 3 to get back into Astral Fire 3, you need to enter Fire Phase with at least 5,600 mana. Now since a Fire 3 costs 1,000 mana, we need to get to at least uh, 6,600 mana in Ice Phase. You'll see here that two mana ticks got me exactly to 6,400 mana. And this is why we have to use Lucid Dreaming. When you're in your ice, uh, when you're in your ice stance, uh, you're able to get your mana regeneration from Lucid Dreaming. And the Lucid Dreaming tick, which is 300 MP, is enough to get you over that threshold. So you can see here, I get the Lucid Dreaming tick and I immediately use uh, my Fire 3 um, which is instant because I have weaved uh, triple cast and my swift cast. 
and I'm able to use uh, three fire fours and uh, under the triple under triple cast I'm able to weave my ley lines uh, very comfortably. I position in the northeast of the arena and I pop my ley lines as soon as it comes up. In E11S it's very important to pop ley lines um, pre-pull and as soon as it comes up uh, around this time of the fight, which is uh, about one, mi uh, 1 minute 26, 1 minute 27 seconds if you're pre-pulling at minus 4. Uh, this helps maximize your uptime and prevents you losing um, any ley lines uh, in the fight. So nothing special here. I, I am just completing my despair and then using that sharp cast I wove to... Um, cast a thunder to get another uh, filler in my ice phase. Again, my team baits the burnt strike at uh, the B marker. Um, so there's a one in seven chance that the boss only does sort of a half turn and faces me. Um, sorry, a one in eight chance that the, that the boss uh, faces me. Um, but there's a seven out of eight chance that the boss will face this direction. Um, and like I said before, this helps to elongate the phase. But anyways, since I know that this burn strike is going to be a fire, I know that I have to um, either weave a sure cast somehow, or I have to uh, somehow um, game the knockback by using between the lines. Um, but that's, that's kind of hard to do. Um, so what I do is, since I'm entering a fire phase here, uh, where I would typically do a 4-4 four four to spare, I instead cut one of the fire fours for a Xeno, which lets me just weave the sure cast. This becomes a three F four despair Xeno line, and under ley lines, it's actually just enough time for me to uh, keep my thunder proc to use in the upcoming ice phase. This is kind of a side tangent, but you should also you should always judge when you can and can't hold your thunder procs into ice phase based on the duration that you have left on your thunder proc. If your Thunder proc has 6 seconds left on it, and you are just starting to cast Despair, you have enough time actually to do Despair, Blizzard 3, and Thunder proc. If your Thunder proc has less than 6 seconds on it, when you are casting Despair, chances are you won't be able to get that Thunder proc off uh, in that exact same scenario unless you were under Ley Lines. So in this, uh, in this case, uh, I do have more than enough time because when I'm casting Despair, my Thunder proc has, you know, over seven, seven seconds on it. So I use the Thunder proc as filler and I just do a standard for a four Despair line. And I'm slowly uh, slide casting towards my Northeast Protean. Um, something to note here is that we have the boss turned uh, to the south of the arena for this mechanic. It makes it so I only have to move if I get the lightning tether. And if I'm on top of my reaction game, I can actually use that thunder proc I just got uh, to weave ethereal manipulation and target my tanks and not really lose uh, any uptime because my ley lines would have already basically expired. If I do get the fire tether, um, I'm already at the relative south of the boss, so I'm very easily able to stack. Uh, with the team without having to move too much. So once this uh, fire phase is done, uh, in a moment, the elemental break is happening, so I use Xenoglossy to move to my clock spot. And one mistake I make here is I don't weave sharp cast to uh, cast on this thunder, but luckily, uh, Luckily, as I'm doing a um, triple cast despair, or sorry, a triple cast with cast, uh, getting all my uh, fires off, my fire fours off before the phase ends, I do get a, uh, a lucky thunder proc, and I'm able to end on an instant cast despair, and then this T3P uh, just connects with the boss. So a small mistake, but luckily um, through the power of RNG, I was able to, um, I was able to fix my mistake. There's nothing special here about the downtime phase uh, for shifting skies, except that we're doing it samurai relative. Normally we do fire south, lightning north, but in this case our samurai has the lightning tether, we let them stay south, 
so that they can meditate and the party just goes north um, to adjust. So I pre-pop sharp cast a few seconds before the fire knockback happens. Um, you can actually pop this a lot earlier, um, but for the reopener I'm doing, um, it won't make a difference. Um, but depending on if you're running, say, a spell speed set and you're doing a 10F4 opener, then you would want to pre-pop a sharp cast a lot earlier, um, just so it just barely gets your thunder um, and you're able to do uh, another sharped uh, T3P um, after you do 5F4s. So my reopener here, I'm using 5F4s um, and I see that triple cast is coming off cooldown uh, very soon. So I use a uh, Fire 1 and use a T3P that I got to weave uh, my triple cast. I see that my polyglot is going to be close to overcapping soon, so I need to think about using Xeno. Um, so I use a Fire 4 and then I decide to use um, one of my Xenos um, in the trick attack because I have to use it anyways. Um, so might as well use it in raid buffs uh, to optimize your DPS. Um, with the instant cast despair, I'm able to weave mana font for free. Um, so everything here is, is pretty standard. For the first Holy Protean, our group does a Black Mage uptime strategy where I swap Protean spots with our Astro. So our Astro will go northeast and I'll go east for this mechanic because it's 100% guaranteed to happen at this time of the fight. I do a standard 4F4 despair cycle uh, right here. And normally I would use a T3P after my despair, but if you notice a bit earlier, um, I did get a refresh of my Thundercloud proc around the time when this elemental break uh, finally hit me. Uh, right about here, I got a Thundercloud proc. So that tells me that I'm able to keep my T3P uh, going into my upcoming ice phase. So I can use that as a filler. So I pop uh, Xeno because I'm about to overcap on Polyglots. Uh, I also weave Sprint. Sprint is very useful in E11S and also in other fights as well to you know, make uh, your slide casting, the distance that you cover while slide casting a lot uh, higher. And it can make uh, getting to places for mechanics a lot easier. Uh, so I weave Sprint here for ease of movement and I'm just going to use the T3P here to dodge out of the holy baited AoE. I dodge to the north in case I do get the Holy Tether. I'm already north-ish, so it's a lot easier for me to slide uh, towards A. Uh, I don't get the Holy Tether though, so I just do a standard 4F4 uh, Despair Cycle here. So once this is done, uh, I see that my potion is coming off cooldown soon. So what I do is I weave an Addl in my Fast Blizzard 3 cast, and that's just to help out with the healing here because there is the uh, Holy Raid Wide here and the Burnish Glory, which will apply the bleed. Uh, so you definitely want to get some mitigation on that on that uh, on that Burnish Glory cast. So my big focus here is getting my potion on cooldown as soon as possible. Uh, when you're killing the when you're killing Fate Breaker really fast, um, basically, if you're killing it before around nine minutes and twenty five seconds, uh, you're going to want to pot pre pull, um, and you're going to want to pot on cooldown as soon as it comes up. And that just lets you get a really good third potion in the fight. So my focus is getting my potion on cooldown as soon as possible. But some other things that uh, are on my mind is that I have to use my polyglot soon. I have to use the Xeno soon because I'm close to overcapping. My thunder debuff on the boss is only at 4 seconds. So I'll have to reapply it uh, soon Then a couple of GCDs. And my Ley Lines is coming off cooldown in, in around 11 seconds, and I want to pop that on cooldown as well. So the way I resolve it here um, is I use Xeno to weave the Sharp Cast, and I can still hold on Refreshing Thunder for a bit. Um, so I use a Fast Fire 3, and I weave uh, my Triple Cast because I do need to get that uh, on cooldown as well. So what I do now is I use uh, immediately use my T3P, my potions on cool, uh, on cooldown now, and I'm just using um, fire fours under triple cast and swift casts, and I pop ley lines as soon as it comes off cooldown. So despite the weird um, spot to use thunder, I'm able to get four of four despair off under ley lines, and I successfully got my pot off uh, as soon as I could. 
Again, uh, what I do here is just a standard um, no B4 line. I use Xeno first uh, just to fill my uh, time and ice and let my thunder take a bit more on the boss. Um, in hindsight here in this ley lines, I probably could have done a 5F4 despair cycle, but I guess uh, I was a bit unsure of my timings here. Um, so instead I just opt for a 4F4 despair. I see that it's a holy burn strike, so I go to the side. And since I'm in a short fire cycle, uh, sorry, I'm in a, I didn't use Blizzard 4 at all. I know that I have to move uh, to dodge this holy bait. So I'll just drop a Xeno here to move. And this 4F4 despair cycle will become a 3F4 despair cycle, which is not that big of a deal. So it's a fire tether and uh, a couple of things. I'm just finishing up my despair. Uh, I'm actually going to be able to use a Blizzard 3 and then Xeno and then T3P. And that'll give me a, more than enough movement to cover my movement south for the stack. And what it'll also do is it'll make using triple cast very comfy as it should line up very, very nicely with the fast fire 3. Uh, so what we'll see here is I'll use Xeno. My thunder is about to tick off, so I'll refresh it. Very convenient timing. Um, Triple cast is coming off cooldown, and I'm just going to pop it, use my 4 of 4 to spare. Um, nothing special here. The elemental break is fire, so we're just grouping up together. I do uh, a Blizzard 3 here, and I shorten uh, my fire phase here because it is an intermission phase, and the boss is disappearing soon, so I just use a fire 4 and despair, and with the Xenoglossy. Um, and that's basically up to the Sundered Sky intermission. We do our Sundering Sky strategy relative to the Samurai. So in most cases, the Holy Tether in our group will go where the Fire Tether normally goes uh, in PF. Um, this is just so our Samurai can keep meditating, but it's not really necessary uh, to do in most groups if you don't have a Samurai. Um, Nothing special with the other parts of Sundered. We're just doing the normal brain dead uh, Sundered strat. One thing you I did here is you pop uh, sharp cast around now when you move for the holy. I think you can pop it a bit earlier than this, but uh, for now with the opener I'm doing, uh, with the reopener I'm doing, this has been working out for me so far. One important thing to note about Sundered Sky is that the boss comes back extremely fast after this downtime phase. You don't have a lot of time to get to your spot. Uh, unlike Shifting Sky, where you have quite a bit of, of leeway, for Sunder Sky, you don't really have a lot of time. So I highly recommend that you pop Sprint here during the downtime, uh, right around now. Uh, and it's able. I'm able to run to my spot, which is around two, um, and drop my, drop my Ley Lines. You also want to make sure that you don't spam Umbral Soul. Uh, too close to when the boss will become targetable again. You don't want your GCD to be rolling um, when the boss is already on the field. You want to be able to start casting right away. So right when I casted Umbral Soul just a, just a, couple, just a second ago is basically the last time you can cast it because right now I'm going to drop Ley Lines. The boss is going to become targetable right now. So I've got Ley Lines out on the field already, which is great because it means I am not dropping ley lines when the boss is targetable and locking myself out of a GCD for a little bit of time through the animation lock. It also means I don't have to use a Xenoglossy or some other spell to weave ley lines. Um, so I highly recommend that you, you know, use sprint to get to your spot because you don't really need sprint uh, in the next minute for, for any mechanic. Um, so yeah, getting sprint and going to your spot is very useful. So my reopener here is basically uh, similar to the uh, one that I had for Shifting Sky. Uh, one other thing to note is that my Ley Lines positioning here is a bit intentional and it's more kind of in between uh, Northeast and East. And that's because if it is a Holy Protean, I'm, I can technically still stack with my healer while being in the Ley Lines. Uh, if it's fire, I can still be closest to the boss and stack with my Gunbreaker over here. And uh, if it's lightning, which it is in this pull, I should be able to be on the edge of my ley lines. Uh, but I do make a mistake here. And I do leave my ley lines uh, for this explosion part. 
uh, but I think I was just playing a bit too safe here uh, because it was a really good run and I didn't want to die to greed. Uh, but yeah, I definitely could have just stayed uh, in the edge of my ley lines. Um, so yeah, I used my T3P here to weave uh, triple and swift casts. Uh, one mistake I make though is I use uh, this um, right now. I use a fire, a fire three proc, where I probably should have used a Zeno because I have to use a Zeno anyway. Uh, and Zeno is higher potency. This trick attack and chain stratagem are going to disappear soon. So it was a bit of a misplay, um, but not by much. Um, but yeah. So next is the Turn of the Heavens 2 mechanic. Um, I'm pre-positioning in case it's uptime pattern. Um, if it is uh, if it is uptime pattern, I'm already here. If it's downtime pattern, I'll use this Xenoglossy to move to the outside uh, cardinal uh, where I'll do the mechanic. Um, luckily, we know it's uh, uptime pattern, so I stay on the intercardinal on the inside. And now it's just a matter of if, if it's a stack mechanic or if it's a spread mechanic. Um, so we see that it's a stack mechanic so I can continue staying and casting. If it was a spread mechanic, I probably would have to cut one of these fire fours for a despair and use this uh, thunder proc to dodge um, out so that I'm not in melee range for the lightning explosion. Um, so what I do here is with this thunder proc that's about to run out, I will uh, initiate a transposed lucid dreaming line and use a xenoglossy as uh, umbral ice filler since I am about to overcap on polyglots. So that Xenoglossy will help uh, with generating mana. Through the slow fire three cast, I'll be able to get a three of four despair line off. The advantage of doing this three of four despair line here um, with, with the transpose lucid dreaming is that it puts my triple cast on really comfortable timing. Um, well, it basically lines me up really well. Um, so I'm able to use uh, despair here and then a blizzard three and a xenoglossy and a sharp cast and then refresh my dot that should give me enough that should make me refresh my dot basically right as it falls off and what a little what it will make my triple cast cooldown be like is i'll be able to use it right after this fast fire three and it'll be extremely comfy to move in case i get the tether and it's a holy tether and i have to move to the outside uh the outside panel here i guess so you can see here the tether has gone out it's on our astro so it's not on me but if it was on me i would be able to move pretty easily um so i just start doing a 4 of 4 despair here um i use ley lines as soon as it comes off cooldown uh generally if you're killing it really fast after prismatic you want to use ley lines before prismatic um, because you can probably gain a GCD doing this, whereas if you're killing the boss extremely fast after Prismatic, you're probably not going to gain a GCD out of using Ley Lines that, uh, that late in the fight, um, just based on how short that, that phase is. Um, and you'll see here that I actually do gain something out of using uh, Ley Lines pre-Prismatic. So nothing really special here, I'm just dumping spells. Um, I'm going to shorten this fire phase a little bit because the boss is going to leave soon. So I do um, use uh, Fire 4, Despair, Xeno, Xeno. There's a chance I could have done two Fire 4s, a Despair, and Xeno, Xeno, but I didn't want to risk it. Uh, so I pop my Xeno and I use this T3P. And you can see this T3P basically connects to the boss right before he disappears. And if I didn't use Ley Lines uh, before Prismatic, this T3P would not have hit. And that's basically a GCD that I gained by using Ley Lines before Prismatic. Now, if you're killing the boss at like 930 or something, then it might be worth saving Ley Lines for after Prismatic so you can use it during your potion. But uh, this timing here works for me based on the kill times that we're getting. Uh, so for Prismatic, uh, we are using a Prismatic ACT trigger here, and that just lets us stay together as a team uh, for Dancer Improv, and it also lets our Samurai meditate as well. This is completely optional and not really needed for most parties, but it does help uh, those two jobs get a bit more resources for the reopener uh, 
after Prismatic, so there's no real downside um, in doing that. So, uh, one thing you'll notice is that since we popped our potion pre-pull at minus five seconds, and we potted on cooldown, my potion is actually coming off cooldown right uh, now before the boss is targetable, and that's exactly what we want to do here, um, so that we don't, you know, we don't have to weave the potion uh, during like the ten seconds that the boss will be alive. Uh, we're able to get it off uh, before the boss is targetable, and that is pretty optimal here. So since the boss is going to die extremely quickly, we actually do a slightly different reopener here, and we actually uh, transpose into Astral Fire 1, and we will instant cast a Fire 3 uh, with our triple cast and swift cast up. So you see I'll pop triple cast and swift cast. This is because there's no downside to doing this. Uh, you don't lose uh, with this kill time. You don't um, lose any casts of Fire 4 or Despair. Um, and a Fire 3 from Astral Fire 1 is actually uh, more powerful than a Fire 3 from Umbral Ice 3. So it's basically free potency. Um, so might as well do it in this case since we're killing the boss extremely fast. So I immediately Fire 3 as soon as the boss is targetable. Um, one thing to note here is that I am not reapplying Thunder. The boss is going to die in the next 10-15 seconds. And reapplying thunder uh hard casting thunder on a boss is only really useful if the boss is going to live for around 36 seconds or so uh and this boss is going to die extremely fast so i'm not going to waste the gcd on my very weak spell which, uh, which is thunder um and you shouldn't really reapply your dots uh in general if the boss is about like sick i'd say like six percent or seven percent here um any more than that then you probably want to try reapplying it uh because you're approaching like a 9 25 to 9 30 kill time uh but yeah so i don't reapply my dot here i just use a fa instant fire three so now i'm in astral fire three i have three instant casts available to me because of the triple cast i have two this i have two xenoglossies coming up so i have five instant casts and the boss is gonna die uh, based on the video title, you know this is a 9-14 kill time. So it's basically going to line up pretty well. I won't really have to hard cast anything. So I'll just do uh, one fire four here. Uh, now that all the buffs are out, I'll use both of my Xenos to make sure that they're in buffs. And then I'll just finish with the fire four and the despair. Ideally, the boss would die like right after this despair for max damage. But, you know, the boss does live a little longer and... I cast a cheeky freeze in case that does hit the boss, but you know, the boss dies really, really fast after the despair. So thanks everyone for watching. Uh, this video turned out a lot longer than I thought it would. So hopefully there was something in here that you can take away for your own gameplay. Uh, if you do have any questions or comments, uh, feel free to post them in the comment section. Uh, I also stream on Twitch at twitch.tv slash exuplosion. Um, and all of my social links are in the description below. Thanks for watching.